Hey everybody, this is Nemo and welcome to day 10 of the Presto Shop 101 series. So, time to deal with customers, as of course we couldn't do much without them, right? So, as with orders, there are multiple ways to access a customer's information page. First off, we get notified about new registration at the very top, next to the new orders bubble. Uh, the one we saw last time. So if I click on the small user icon here, here um, I can directly see the new customers that have registered the shop. And of course, if I click on it, uh, one of the entries, I can uh, reach uh, the customer information page directly. So this is John Doe and as soon as we access the page, we're given a reasonable, even too much probably, uh, amount of uh, information. It might be just a tiny bit confusing at first glance, so let's go through each of these boxes. Starting from the top left, we have some personal information about this customer. So the name, of course, this is the ID, email, uh, social title, email, uh, sorry, um, age, registration date, last visit, language, and whatever. Then next to it here, we can add a note for our employees or even ourselves as a reminder concerning this customer. And for example, he might have got in touch by phone asking you some uh, something specific, perhaps about delivery. And this is a really good spot uh, to add that kind of information. Useful to keep things in mind for future orders as well. Then scrolling down, we have, a, of course, a list of this customer's orders. Any eventual message that he sent. And again, scrolling down his cards, which products he bought any eventual vouchers here, the last connections list, which is basically when he's been online and uh, he's been visiting your site uh, the last time. And lastly, the customer groups he belongs to. And we will see what these groups are uh, in just a second. At the very bottom, we have an overview of all his addresses as well. And here is where you might want to modify, although addresses can be accessed uh, separately from customers' addresses. Uh, here is where uh, you can decide to modify uh, an address in case you need. Just So just uh, hit the edit button here and you'll be taken to the address modification page. Of course, I didn't mention it before, but um, if we need, we can also modify the personal info by hitting the edit button there. And this comes in handy when, say, someone lost his password and so we can reset using this form here, writing something and then saving. I won't do it now. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to access anymore if I write something I don't remember. Or say um, he wants to receive newsletters and again, he can't access uh, from the front office or opt in for ad emails or whatever else. Of course, you can also change the, the name if you want for any reason, although uh, people, I, I bet people doesn't ch don't change uh, their name so frequently. So uh, birthday, whatever, whatever uh, kind of info you, might, you can think about concerning customers. And then, of course, uh, the customer groups I already mentioned. So, what are these groups in the end? Well, as you can see, a customer can belong to multiple groups, although in this case, the customer is the only one ticked. However, one and only one has to be chosen as default. So let's see why from the left-hand menu, customers, groups. So here we can see all of those groups previously listed on the customers page. We have starting from the left, uh, a tick, uh, sorry, a checkbox that will allow us to eventually erase them. And as you can see, you cannot erase the, um, the three default one, which are visitor, guest and customer, we can only erase custom ones. 
Then we have the ID, the group name, the discount percentage, the number of members belonging to it, and whether or not uh, customers belonging to these, uh, the, this group will be shown prices. So let's inspect one of them um, by going here, edit. Uh, bear in mind that if you click directly, you will be just, uh, you will be shown a list of customers belonging to this group. So to modify one, edit. So of course we have the name, the discount. Well, customer groups can in fact be used to create global discounts for your customers. For example, say you want to create a premium group for customers who bought goods over a certain amount. Well, without any module, you have to add them to the group manually. However, with the built-in functionality itself, you can easily create a site-wide discount for them. And here is where that default group takes action because these discounts cannot be summed up. Only the one of the default group will be applied. Also, we can choose if you want to display a tax or taxless version of prices to completely hide prices. If, for example, you only want to display it to register customers. And at the same time, we can decide to apply a category specific discount for this group by uh, clicking here, which would be uh, especially to restrict this uh, kind of discount to specific products. But be aware that it will definitely override any other discount for that category's products. So any uh, specific price on those products will be removed and this will be applied instead. So let's move on. If we have a look down here, we have authorized models. Why? Well, with customer groups, we can also restrict the models access. And we briefly saw something like that with payment modules and we will uh, mention it briefly before concluding. Um, but once more, we can create uh, some premium features as we saw just a second ago. So let's let's give it a try actually. Uh, let's disable, for example, this is customer, so let's disable the banner block. And then let's assign a global 50% discount for this group. All right, so let's scroll down and save, it should work. So now I am not logged in, so I can see full prices and uh, I can see the banner block. But if I sign in, so, pub at pricetestshop.com. All right, so, say, the banner block is gone and I should be able to see, yep, uh, I am actually able to see reduced prices by 50%. So that's darn easy. But now, uh, going back to what I mentioned earlier about premium access, we can also, if we, if we want, completely hide certain categories and, of course, their products for certain customer groups. How? Well, of course, from the category page in the back office. <clears throat> so if I go back to catalog categories, let's try with women, why not? So edit scroll down and as you can see you have group access right now all groups can access it but if i so i'm a customer i think customer is my default group so if i disable that and go back to women you can see first women is gone from the top menu but i do not have access to um this category anymore and if i now try to look for let me sign out so women blouse is only belonging to this category. So if I now uh, log back in, puppetpressshop.com, all right, if I refresh here, I do not have access to this product anymore. So uh, to hide 
this uh, product, I had to assign it to this blocked category, not blocked, maybe it's better to call it premium category only. So if products are assigned to other categories as well, people, even people not having the right privileges will still be able to access. Great. So um, as I mentioned, categories are not only the, the are not the only thing that can be restricted using customer groups. We saw uh, modules can be also disabled, and the third way was the one we saw in the in the modules uh, day from modules payment, and that was about restricting payment modules. Scrolling down, as you can see here, we have groups restrict restriction as well. So the same, the very same principle applies here. All right, so let's let's take a look now at the most important page of your shop since it helps you keep in touch with your customer base and that's customers, customer, sorry, customer service. What is this page exactly? Well, whenever someone sends you a message using the front office's contact form, it will be added to a list here. So a new customer thread will be created for each new email and you or your employees will be able to follow these from here. A few words about it actually, um, guests, cannot follow threads. So they will receive emails in reply to theirs, but will have no place where to see the entire conversation they had with you. At the same time, registered customers can only do it if they get in touch from an order detail page, which is not exactly useful in my opinion. So uh, I want to plug myself just a bit here. If you're looking for something, say a bit more advanced, I have a model for it. So it's called Press Shop Ticket System. And now since the last uh, update also supports guests tickets. So basically everyone will be able to create a structured thread with all of the functionalities of the standard customer service. So email forwarding to employees, departments, etc., And of course a lot more. So if you're interested, I will leave a link below the video, but uh, make sure you check out uh, store.nemops.com in any case. All right, so I'm done plugging myself. <laughs> Let's get back to the real tutorial. The customer service page. So at the very top, we got a bunch uh, of stats that I uh, personally uh, find mostly useless apart from the first one, maybe which displays the number of currently open threads. Then we have departments. If you ever tried sending a message from uh, the store using the contact form here, let's, let's have a look, contact us. As you can see here, we have different subject headings and there are those departments we just saw. So in this case, customer service webmaster. Why are they useful exactly? Well, each of them can be bound to a different email address, which can be very handy in case of uh, in case you have a large store, say. And to modify them or add new ones, just back office customers contacts, and click on one. For example, webmaster, and as you can see, it's possible to change the name, of course, and the title that's displayed there, uh, the email whether or not we want to save messages to that customer threads page we saw and a brief description uh, for it for your own benefit. So what happens exactly when someone writes from that page, the contact page we saw, or even from the order detail page? Well, first, an email is sent to the address connected to the chosen department. And at the same time, a new thread is created, as mentioned before, is created in the customer service page. And it's usually automatically put in the open, this green one, status. Sadly, at the time of this recording, we cannot change these four statuses, which are uh, open, closed, pending one, and pending two. 
If you want more, again, have a look at my ticket system. Then, how do we manage a customer thread? Well, simply click on it. And this next interface is, <clears throat> sorry, uh, interface is a tiny bit confusing. And I think it was a lot clearer in PrestaShop 1.5, but uh, it has really the very same functionality. First, we can mark has handled, which basically closes the, the thread. Then mark is pending one or pending to the statuses we just saw. And of course, we can forward this discussion to an employee and the employee will receive an email and he will be able to answer later on. Of course, here down here, we can read. Uh, the, the bigger one should be the last message sent and the other are all the trailing messages uh, belong, belonging to this thread. And obviously we can uh, reply to the customer. Uh, please notice that if the uh, messages are order related, there will also be a link to the related products. And uh, scrolling at the very bottom, the order these products were bought with as well. So let me scroll up a bit. As you can see here, we have something written in the answer form already. And that's the default message, which you might have already spotted actually here. This is the default message. And uh, writing a couple of lines here might save you the bore of doing it each and every time. Um, above it, as you can read, we can choose if we want to allow file uploading or not, which is basically uh, message attachments. And of course, this is uh, entirely up to you. All right, um, we're approaching the end of the video, but as a very last topic concerning customers, let's have a look at shopping carts. It is nothing but fundamental uh, to know what your visitors are interested in. Even if they don't complete an order, Price a Shop keeps a memory of which carts have been created. And uh, this page, which is customers shopping, again, shopping carts, this page might become an indispensable tool for customers' follow-ups. So in case uh, you're not spend, uh, willing to spend money on third-party models, you can check which customers have added which products here but never completed an order. Actually, there is a distinction between non-ordered and abandoned carts. I'm not totally sure uh, when PrestaShop uh, decides one is abandoned and, and, and one is not ordered. In this case, uh, it seems it's when I erased uh, those, um, those products I had added to the cart, but not always. Uh, so I didn't dive in, into it, but there must be some um, reason behind it. So apart from that, you can decide if you want to, for example, send them an email with, uh, say, a voucher code and encourage them to buy and complete the purchase. Why not? Or if we inspect the cart directly, as you can see here, we can create an order out of this cart, of course, with the customer's consent, always with the customer's consent. On the other hand, if the order has been placed like this one, it will be linked directly here from the detail page, right? So really great way for uh, doing some customers follow up. All right, I think we're done for today's video. Once more, make sure you check out the ticket system in case you're looking for something a tiny bit better, well, a lot better actually, uh, than the default customer service uh, Press the Shop comes with. All right, as always, thanks for watching guys. I will see you next time.